Hi, welcome to a product review video by Robojack. In this video, we are going to review this backboost converter based on XL6009. This is a, a from XL semiconductor, and the input voltage is uh, 5 to 32 volts, and the output is regulated up to 38 volts. And the maximum current that this uh, chip can handle is 4 ampere, and that's the claim current for this module and also the efficiency is up to 94 percent it has very minimum amount of components i'm touching it so you can see the size Ooh, the width of this is 23.7 the length of it is 49.2 millimeter so the depth is 13.7 millimeter we are going to test this product at different stages. We are ch going to change the voltage, the input voltage, and we will see what it can do at a different condition of vo input voltage, and also we will set load at different voltage and different currents and see the stability of this device. So this is the data sheet from Excel Semiconductor, the original data sheet and the chip is XL6009 it says 60 volts 4 ampere so that is the chip the original chip and so it has a lot of features it, it has thermal shutdown function built-in current limiting function so these all all this it has all these great features here which I'm not gonna go through so the package that they use here is TO263-5L so that is this package for some of the characteristics for example input input voltage can be minus 3 to 36 volts so the feedback voltage we are not worried because we are not changing the module this is already used so this is the quiescent supply current so typically it, it will consume 2.5 milliampere so it has a enable pin for some applications you need to send a signal to turn this on so you can do that just set pin 2 at high so now this is the input and the voltage is shown here at 26.0 volts and this is the output connected to another voltmeter 7.4 volts so this 7.4 volts is independent of the input now the input is 26 volts let me go a little up up to 30 it can be accepted so let's set this at exact some exact value so this is 8 volts and now I'm going you see it become a 30 volts and we have still 8 volts and it's so precise let me make it even exact 8 so that's 8 volts let's reduce it I'm going very fast uh, 7 volts still 8 volts so as you can see here now this is boost before it was back converter because it was reducing the voltage now it's boost automatically so you don't have to do anything because the output is set at 8 volts and let's see and now we are 4.5 that's still 8 okay immediately changed now this is irregular so 3.6 and the data sheet suggests the input voltage should be 3 volts so let's see if it can sustain no so for 8 volts you must have 3.5 or 3.7 volts in order to get the 8 volts and now if I go up again up to 20 so 29 volts as you can see here only we are seeing 10 millivolts variation down and output is very stable so of course this is without the load so let's change it to higher voltage 
I'm doing the clockwise, that's good. They made it such that clockwise is increasing. So now it's around. So let me make it 30 volts. It's 30 volts. Let me go up. So, so that is 30, output is 30, let's go down. From 9 volts we are getting 30 volts, 4 volts, that's also 30 volts. As you can see, as 3.1 also gives you 30 volts, 29 point something, so 3.5 is stable. So now this is the setup. The input voltage is now connected here from this source and I've just have a, a vol voltmeter connected and this is the output that is connected to, to here and the output is connected to the load through the thick wire. This wire is tiny but very short but the actual wire that supplies the voltage is very thick so I'm not worried about the uh, voltage drop on the uh, input. So both cables are powerful enough. So now we are testing the 12 volts input and 30 volts output to the load using 4 amp. So let's run the 4 amp. So the 4 amp immediately shut off because the voltage drop look here carefully almost less than 4 volts so it cannot handle 4 amp because the internal protection get 3 so the voltage is very low 6 volts not acceptable so a three vo three amp doesn't work doesn't give you three volts so now i have 12 volts as an input 24 volts as an output double and now we have uh, four ampere so let's see this one again shut off because the voltage dropped significantly so let's make it 3 amp 10 volts not acceptable now let's make it 2 amp so if 2 works we are gonna go for 2.5 no input is steady but output is not 24 volts so failed so now let's try oh, 1.5 so now 24 volts output Three volts drop. So failed. So let's go for one amp. The voltage is steadily dropping. You see, it's dropping. 0 0.7 volts drop. One volt voltage drop
0 0.5 volts at 1 amp that is too low unacceptable failed so now this is a back converter this time because back conversion is could be easier in this case let's see from 12 to 9 because the 9 volt is one of the standards so let me go to 4 amp and then start definitely not good total shut off 3 amp 12 to 9 voltage is dropping 1 volt drop not good Pump. 8.9 still good but let's see not acceptable failed so let's make it 1.5 so now at 1.5 let's see the device was already hot so So 1.5 we just accept it without a further test. Now let's test it with 12 volt input, 5 volts output. This is another standard voltage. So I'm starting with 3 ampere this time because I know 4 will not work. So the voltage has dropped a little. So the voltage is being dropped more and more. So 3 amp, not good. Failed. 2 ampere, 5. So 2 ampere is good but I would not trust it for continuous usage especially in uh, the area where the temperature is high. Industrial application the temperature is around 30 degrees or higher. This will definitely fail within a few seconds. 12 volts to 3.3. .3. This is another standard voltage that is needed in many applications. Let's start with 12 volts to 3.3. To 3.3 volts, 2 ampere. So at 3.3 volts, 2 ampere is very cool now with comparing to before. Of course, it's hot, but not as hot as before. The vision is that this device can handle in boost mode. It can handle 0 0.5 ampere to 1 ampere, not more than that. And in back com converter, which it reduces the voltage, at, uh, it can handle up to 1.5 ampere. In some cases, it can go up to 2. So 1.5 is reliable for back converter. Thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe so you can get updates of my upcoming video. Please also thumb up the video and also if you have any question or comment, please post it. I will try to answer and reply.